Hello, I'm Pastor Jackson from True Life Baptist Church in Edmonton. We've been talking about 21st century religion, and we've dealt with a number of different aspects of that religion. Today, we want to talk about a new aspect of 21st century religion that we call scientism. Now, let's go back and review what a religion is. First of all, a religion is something that captivates our thoughts. It captivates our emotions, our funds, our worship. That means our reverence and submission. And it captivates our desire. In other words, we expect answers and we seek for answers from that particular thing. As we mentioned before, many of the 21st century religions do not march under the banner of religion. They do not have churches. They do not have high priests or pastors. Yet they work and they exist just like a religion. Scientism is one of those 21st century religions that permeates our society. We find it everywhere we look. I want to be very clear. There is a difference between science and scientism. When we say that scientism is a religion, we are not talking about science and the learning that we gain through science. Science is defined this way, as the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation, experimentation, and the testing of theories against the evidence obtained. In other words, science is knowledge gained through the observation and testing of a particular theory. When anything is consistently observable and testable under similar conditions, we often consider that to be one of the laws of science, such as the laws of thermodynamics. Scientism, on the other hand, can be defined this way. It is the theory of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world, which can neither be observed nor tested, yet it is assumed to be one of the unquestionable laws of science. One such example of scientism is the theory of natural selection, which of course is a basis for evolutionary theory. Some would consider that natural selection is one of the laws of science, even though it cannot be observed, nor can it be tested. When anyone questions natural selection, especially when it applies to evolution, that individual is considered to be a nutcase, as if they had denied gravity, that they had uh, denied the four seasons of the year or any other observable and testable area of science. Another example of scientism is that of climate change. It is not objectively observable, nor is it testable. The only place that we can find it proven out is in a computer model. Those computer models are filled with subjective material. If that subjective material is removed from those computer models, climate change falls apart. As we consider scientism, we see that it meets every aspect of religion that we've discussed. First of all, scientism captivates the thoughts. Everywhere we look, we find politicians, we find teachers, we find activists, we find actors, writers, and celebrities all speaking about the urgency of climate change. It seems like that's all they can think about, and it seems like that's all they want us to think about, is these various issues that are brought up by scientism. Scientism also captivates the emotions if somebody believes an unscientific thing, for example, if they don't believe in gravity, we might laugh, we might shrug the shoulders and say, well, maybe they'll learn better later on. But scientism cannot allow anyone to doubt their theories. Everyone must go along. And if you do not go along, there will be an emotional reaction. For example, if you say, I do not believe in evolution. Instead, I believe God's record that he laid out for us in Genesis chapters 1 and 2. 
And I believe that that is not uh, allegorical statements that are made in Genesis 1 and 2, but rather it is actual history that God has laid out for us. The response that you receive from those who follow the religion of scientism is an emotional reaction. How could you possibly be so ignorant? How could you possibly be so foolish? Everyone knows that this is true. Everyone understands that creation could never have happened. So there is that emotional reaction. We also see that scientism captivates funds. We have federal, provincial, and even local carbon taxes going on. I recently received a survey from the city of Edmonton, and they asked if I thought it would be a good idea to have a local level carbon tax as an initiative and as an incentive for people to be more climate conscious. You see, scientism is captivating the funds, even of those who are not adherents to that religion. Scientism also captivates worship, that is, the reverence and submission of its adherents. Uh, science demands presentation of theories followed by experiments to prove or to disprove that theory. But scientism, on the other hand, cannot be questioned. Instead of questioning scientism, there must be blind faith and submission to every statement and every aspect of scientism. The proponents of scientism, such as Bill Nye the Science Guy and Neil deGrasse Tyson, are considered authoritative in their statements. If they say anything, you can't question that because the scientists said so. Anyone who would disagree with these high priests of the religion of scientism are mocked as ignorant and as science deniers. Scientism also captivates the desire. That means that scientism is where people look for answers to their perceived problems. Many of these problems really are problems that are issued by scientism, and then the answer is given by scientism. It is really circular thinking in a lot of ways, but it is nothing but religion. Scientism, such as that in relation to climate change, offers answers in fear-mongering statements that the world will end in 20 years due to the effects of man-made climate change. Of course, scientism's answer to climate change is that we no longer use fossil fuels, that we eat bugs, that we all drive electric vehicles, that we no longer have air conditioning, that we kill all of the cows, and so on and so on. The truth of the matter is, it is not wrong for us to learn new things about our world. If we are objective and learn things, that is a tremendous thing. And science certainly has taught us many things. Medical science has provided us with many breakthroughs with new drugs and new treatments that have allowed us to live longer and healthier lives. And for that, we should be thankful. I in no way am putting down science. The religion of scientism, however, is a great danger. If you claim to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no room for scientism in that equation. You must either follow Christ with all of your heart, or you are denying Christ by following scientism. There really is no two ways about it. I hope that this has been a help to you today in understanding the religion of scientism. Let us beware of its dangers and let us follow after the Lord Jesus Christ and what he teaches us in his word. If you have questions for us, please reach out to us because we'd love to hear from you. You can even leave a comment below and let us know what you think. Thank you for taking the time to listen. We love you and appreciate you. God bless you today. <laughs>